that, let's take a look at our lesson on solving quadratic inequalities. We're going to graph and solve quadratic inequalities, and then we're going to um, work them algebraically. So we're going to do this a couple of different kinds of ways. So first, let's look at graphing. We're going to look at the graphing. So before I graph this quadratic, the easier thing to do would be to put this into uh, vertex form. That would, you know, then I could find the vertex. It'd be much easier. So let's complete the square. Let's do that. So I'm going to move the constant over. Okay. Then we see that b is 1. So I half 1, which is a half. And I square a half. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I'm going to add 1 fourth to both sides. Yes, we're dealing with fractions. That's so fun. So let's say negative 10 plus 0.25. We can go to decimal form. That's fine. So it'll be minus 9.75 greater than. Then we'd have x minus one half squared. Okay, so this would be y is greater than x minus one half squared plus 9.75. Okay, so our vertex is at one half 9.75. Okay, so let's go over here and, and graph that. Nice, so one half around here, one, two, three, four, five, 7, 8, 9.75. So we're looking at about right here. Okay, so our y-intercept, if you recall, is when x is 0. So the y-intercept, if we zero those out, it would be at 10. So my y-intercept is 0, 10. All I did is I plugged a 0 in up here for x, and I can see that y would be 10. So 0, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we know that the parabolas are perfectly symmetrical. So we know if there's one here, there's one, you know, a point um, at 0, 10, there's going to be a point at 1, let's see, 1, 10. Now this inequality sign is not or equal to, so we know that when we graph this, it's going to be dotted. So let's do our dotted line. Now you may recall us working with linear inequalities. Um, what we want, there's a couple different ways to to work this. We could choose a point on the inside or outside, so I could pick a point here and a point here, and we could plug it into our equation and see which one works. That's certainly an option. And um, if you're a little skittish about this, that's probably the best option for you. Uh, I mean, you could even pick 0, 0. That would be easy. So is um, 0 greater than 0 squared minus 0 plus 10. Um, no, 0 is not bigger than 10. So we know it's not the outside that we need to shade, it's the inside. So let's shade that inside. So the other way to think about this, if you don't want to pick points, is you want to think, well, Okay, y has to be bigger. Where would y be bigger? Would y be bigger um, inside here or outside here? And hopefully you can see that y would be bigger inside the parabola. So that's solving gr with graphing. So let's move to our second technique where we're going to solve, actually we're gonna be using sign analysis. And I like steps, so on how to do these. I like steps. So we're going to list the steps over here in this box. Um, okay, so here's the first step. What we want to do using sign analysis. We need to move all terms. So we're moving all terms to one side of the inequality.
leaving the number zero on the other side. Doesn't really matter which way you go. Doesn't really matter um, which side you go to. You just need to make sure that zero is on one side. Okay, the second step. Second step is we would factor. Okay. The third step is we're going to place our solutions on a number line these the solutions if you recall solutions mean these are numbers that make the factor zero just a reminder and we're going to do some examples so hopefully that will will make sense and then step four, we're going to check the intervals for signs that are either going to be a positive interval or a negative interval. And then finally, we're going to write the answer. We'll write it either in um, interval notation or we'll write it in set notation. That's a lot of steps, isn't it? Okay, yeah, that's a lot of steps. So let's start. Let's start with one that's already factored. That's gonna, um, so these are our steps. Let's start with one that's already factored. Great, so step one, move all terms to one side, leaving a zero on the other side. That's already done for us, and it's already been factored. So on this first one, steps one and two are done. So solutions, place the solutions on the number line. So what would, so x plus two equals zero, and x plus five equals zero. So negative two and negative five. So we're gonna place those numbers on this number line. So we've got a negative 5 and a negative 2. Okay, so that is step 3, place solutions on a number line. Next we're going to check for the intervals to see if they're positive or negative. Okay, so this step you can actually do in your head. Um, I'm going to write it out so that um, it, so that it makes more sense to you. I'll write this first one out. So we'll call this section A, we'll call that section B, and we'll call this section C. Okay, so in section A, um, I would choose, say, I don't know, negative six. So then I would put a negative 6 in here, and we'll just put that under there. So negative 6 plus 2, negative 6 plus 5. So what is that? That's um, negative 4 times a negative 1. That is positive. So I have a negative number times a negative number gives me a positive number. Now, it doesn't really matter that it's a negative 4 and a negative 1. That doesn't really make any difference. It, it's just, so the significance is, is it's negative. Negative times negative is positive. So this is a positive section. Okay, this is a positive section. All right, so in section B, let's look at section B. Um, I would choose and again, you can do this part in your head. You don't have to write it all out like this. I just am on the very first. Choose a negative 3. Um, that is inside that. We want to pick a number inside the interval. So I'm choosing a negative 3. Um, this time we'll do that in our head. So negative 3 plus 2 is a negative number. Uh, negative 3 plus 5 is a positive number. So this is a negative section. Okay, this is a negative section. Now for section C, 
Um, I really like zero. Whenever I have the opportunity to choose zero, I, I really like that. Zero happens to be in section C's interval. So I would put a zero, you know, in here, get a positive. A zero in here, get a positive. And this means positive since positive is positive, so this section is positive. Okay, so we just completed step four, which is checking the intervals for whether they're positive interval or negative interval. So as you can see, we have two negative intervals and one, uh, excuse me, two positive intervals and one negative interval. Hmm, let's see what it wants. So we want our answer, okay, we want our answer for this to be larger than zero. So we want this to be larger than zero. So we have to ask ourselves, well, okay, which is bigger than zero? Is a positive number bigger than zero or a negative number bigger than zero? Well, I know you know that. A positive number is bigger than zero. So our, we're gonna do interval notation so our answer, we're doing step five, we're writing our answer, is negative infinity to negative five. And this doesn't have the extra equal sign under it, so only soft parentheses are possible. And it's also from negative two to infinity. Whew, there we go, we did one whole problem with um, this, this steps. Okay, we got this, so let's um, do our second one. Now, we've had a lot of practice with um, factoring and, uh, well, we'll just, we'll just jump in, we'll jump in. We, um, step one is already done, all the terms are on one side, there's just a zero over here, great. Step two, factor, um, just so that my factoring is easier and we always like to look for GCF, I'm gonna factor out a negative two and that leaves me x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, we can't get rid of the negative 2. All right, don't get any ideas about erasing it or anything. It has to stay there. So we factor this um, quadratic to x plus 4, x minus 3. Um, we can see that our solutions would be 3 and negative 4. So so I did number two, I factored. Number three, place solutions on a number line. So we've got a negative four and a three. Great. Um, we want to check, so we've done number three, place solutions on the number line. Number four, check the intervals for positive or negative. So I basically have three things to check. This is negative this turns out to be positive or negative, this turns out to be positive or negative, I don't know, we're going to figure that out. But that first one is always negative. So I'm just going to, so I don't forget, this, this negative just stands for the negative two. Okay, so we will do our same thing, that's section A, that's section B, and that's section C. So for section A, I'm gonna choose I don't know, negative five. Okay, so negative five plus four, that's a negative number. Negative five minus three, that's a negative number. So negative times negative times negative is negative. So this section is negative. Okay, section B between negative four and three. Hmm, let's choose zero, because you know I love zero. So we're gonna choose zero, okay. So I've got zero plus four, that's a positive number. Zero minus three, that's a negative number. So negative times a positive times a negative is a positive. This is a positive section. Last section, we almost got this, guys. All right, section C, um, let's choose four. And again, you don't have to write all this out. You can do it in your head. I'm writing it out so that you really completely understand what I'm doing. Um, Okay, what I mean by writing, I mean you don't have to write what you're choosing out. You can just do that in your head. 
um, and you don't have to write these these parts out right here you can just do that in your head if you want you can just write that part um, but it's entirely up to you okay so we're choosing a 4 so 4 plus 4 that's a positive number 4 minus 3 is a positive number so negative times positive times positive that's a negative so this is a negative section Okay, so we did step four. We checked our intervals for positive or negative. Okay, so now um, we need to figure out what our answer is. So this part needs to be greater, can't even write, greater than zero. See, we got greater than zero. So what's greater than zero? Well, yeah, positive number. That's greater, positive is greater than zero. So our answer, now this is or equal to, so we need to be careful. Um, it could equal zero. It doesn't have to be just positive, but it could be zero. And we know that these are the locations where our um, inequality is zero. Okay, so let's see. So we would do, oh, a bracket, a hard bracket, negative 4, I'm doing interval notation again, 2, 3, because negative 4 and 3 are included because we can equal 0, that's okay. Alright, and that concludes our lesson for this topic.